If you play with fire, your fingers might get burned. I believe always that the music business is full of slots available. And the slot that's available right now is the Billy Joel slot. Now, Billy Joel is a genius, and you know nobody's going to actually take his place. But that kind of slinging songwriter, piano player guy, you know that that thing, that slot's available, man. And Peter's going to fill it. He's going to fill it to the brim. When you first meet Peter, you realize that he's got chops, meaning he really can play, and. He's got phenomenal technique. You know, he was one of those boys that got up on the stage and everybody just went, oh my God. Every decade or so comes one of these great players. He was very afraid that if he even sang, he might be misinterpreted. In early 2006, Peter began work on a new CD with renowned producer David Foster. It will be a dramatic departure from his previous jazz-based albums. More. I got on a plane and flew to New York to work with this guy because he wanted to record in New York. Usually you can't make that request until you've sold 10 million records, but I knew he was right in a way because he wanted that New York feel because he's very East Coast and the music's very East Coast. The last time he was in New York to record was 30 years ago for Michael Jackson or something, so he's like, F you, Peter, you know, you got me back to New York, so I said, great. Months later, Peter was persuaded to leave the Big Apple and put the finishing touches on the CD in California. Now we're going to go, we're going to head out to David's studio, David Foster's studio in Malibu. It's called Chartmaker. And today we're going to work on guitars. We got a long day of just laying down guitars on the tracks that we recorded in New York and just picking and choosing where we want it to be played, basically working it out. Yeah, that's not. And even at the end, you could go into the. And, you, and when I say kind of all concert, you know, leave you know, leave some space for like different phrases. But at the end there, when my vocal comes in, I hear your line kind of somehow colliding with that. I'm going oh over right. your. I'm just finishing. Yeah, and you're you finishing start. off, as yeah. opposed to what we, what you just do, which having the downbeat a little after that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but just just do a few. What happened to Peter was that he woke up one morning and he said, "I'm not going to be a jazz artist anymore." I want to be a singer-songwriter. And that could be the kiss of death, but in his case, it was a moment of brilliance. I mean real brilliance, because this kid, he just has it. He just has it. I loved him as a jazz artist, and I love him even more as a pop artist. There, there, what if he came in there? Oh, love that, love that. See, and now, without that, I think there should be a, oh, some, some other lick. There. I, I, would have to, I would have to punch that in unless there's a take. But. You know what I hear also somewhere? I keep hearing these notes. Like throughout the chorus, you know, you know. Whatever that is, there could be could some be kind of line. That could be guitar. It could have been something around those two notes. Some kind of part. Yeah, let's do the guitar. That's what, I'd, that's what I'd do. He's very strong-minded about what he likes and what he doesn't like. I muted a, a bunch of shit that I hate. And the thing is, a lot of it's the stuff you love. Just saying it now. <laughs> I hate it, though. I really hate it. I hate it. I want you, you to hear. As much as I hate the idea of a saxophone and Cinderella Beautiful? Yes. I, probably as much as you don't like that, I don't like wow. this. That energy and that um, exuberance that he has and that focus and the pain in the ass that he is, that, that I was too, and it's two pains in the ass trying to, you know, make a record. Listen, David Walsh doesn't want to take him out anywhere. That's, right. that's the bottom right. line. You go ahead and so do what you have to do. It, it, it's a question of whether you're allowing me to do it or not, so. Well, I mean, I just think it's a great f***ing hook that you're just getting rid of. I understand. Right. So. Does anybody agree with you? No, I agree with you. No. Yeah. Look, it's quite it is. Either you like it or you hate it. Well, you, you know, know, use it, you use it. 
you know, out of conflict comes greatness sometimes, you know, and, and, and compromise breeds mediocrity, and there's no compromise going on in this record. No, it isn't the reason why I hate it. That's not the reason for me taking it out. What the average consumer thinks right now is not my, I, I just don't like it. When I put that record on in my home after we've made it, and I hear it, I'm going to be I hate that. And that's the reason I don't want it on there. Okay, I don't so, play music for other people, okay, in so, a way. I, I got to play. Right. Well, I got nothing to lose. It's time to cruise. I'm getting out of this place. So while my guard's taking a snooze, I'm going to make my move that I'm leaving a trace. On this album, it's very likely that he will lose a lot of his fans that won't appreciate the fact that he, they will think that he's sold out. I have no feeling like that whatsoever. I think Peter has found himself. Oh, All I can do is hope that it reaches a wider audience, but, uh, you know, that's out of my hands. My, right now, what's in my hands is making the record. I want it to be the best it can be for me. I want to listen to it and say, that's what I wanted. When I wrote that song, that's exactly the kind of production, that's exactly the kind of treatment. And then I hope people are touched by it or uh, listen to it and like it and love it, you know? Thank you very much. Good night.